Patty. I'm Landis Hollifield, the public information officer for emergency services and the city of Marion. And today um, we're going to talk a little bit about how COVID touched your life. Patty, I understand that you had a relative pass from COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit about that? My dad, he was 87 years old, had just turned 87 and uh, me and my husband went to Pigeon Forge for the weekend and when I come home, I, on the Friday after we'd went to Pigeon Forge, um, I started having symptoms. I mean, I didn't know it was symptoms at the time. I just thought it was a tickle in my throat. So it was my weekend to stay with daddy because me and my brother and sister took turns. And so I went and stayed with him. And by Sunday evening, I was feeling pretty bad by the time my sister got there. Monday morning, I tested positive. By Wednesday, daddy tested positive. Mm -hmm. and he lived 11 days after he tested positive and well, passed away. Tell me about that. Um, when you tested positive, how did that feel? I prayed, you know, Lord, please don't let me be positive. But I knew I, I, knew I had it because I was so sick. I felt so bad. But my brother was with Daddy at the time. And I called him and I said, please watch Daddy. I said, I'm positive. I said, any symptoms he gets, please take care of it. Well, the next day I called, see if he's okay. And Eddie said, well, he don't want to get out of bed today. And that, that didn't happen. Then I said something about his caretaker. We had a, a lot of you that come from New Horizon to stay with him during the day so we could go and do what we needed to do. He said something, well, Lottie's not here. And I said, okay, why? You know, well, I don't know, you know, he made up something. And then um, I said something Wednesday about it. And a lot of you wasn't there again. And I said, Eddie, what's, and he said, Patty, daddy's positive. He didn't want to tell me. He, uh, mm -hmm. He knew that I was worried about it. He didn't want to tell me that Daddy was positive. But yeah, when I, when he told me he was positive, I knew that was probably going to be the end. Mm. But um, Eddie stayed with him, and and he he uh, took care of him. Daddy never got out of the bed again after that. I was so sick that I couldn't go and see him or take care of him or anything. Eddie took care of him and the home hospice came. Luann Walker was his uh, hospice nurse. And we couldn't ask for a better. I mean, she took care of Daddy. She got a, a person from the EMS to come to the house and do a COVID test when Eddie felt like, he, I think you need to test him. From the time that daddy got it till I could go up there, I kept blaming myself, you know. I didn't know I had it. You might have symptoms, you might not have symptoms. We had went to Pigeon Forge, but we had wore our mask and everything while we were over there. But now everybody sees masks, they help in mm -hmm. certain situations. You don't know where you're gonna pick up a germ at. I had a real hard time with it blaming myself and how long would daddy have lived if I hadn't have given it to him. And for about a month, I went through that every day, thinking about daddy and thinking how old he would have lived to be or whatever. But I finally talked to my pastor and he said, you know, God allowed it. We're, we're only allowed a, a lot of days on this earth. And, and God knew that it was time, but I just hate I had to be part of it, you know. I wouldn't give it to my daddy for nothing. Kind of tell me, uh, we talked about the fact how he got COVID and everything like that, but kind of describe your dad for us. What was he like? <laughs> well, anybody that knew my daddy 
Joe Sneed never wondered what Daddy was thinking. If he thought it, it come out his mouth. That's what many a time I would kind of even get upset with him, and I'd say, Daddy, just because you think it, don't mean you need to say it, and. And just because it's true, you don't mean. I mean, Daddy was a good man. He'd he'd give the shirt off his back if he thought he could help somebody. But you never had to wonder what he was saying. But since he retired from the thread plant, he loved just to fiddle around and go to the trash dump. He was like Fred Sanford. He <laughs> he'd bring anything home that he thought he could use a part off of or he'd just tear it apart to get the screws out of it. But we, we've laughed at some of the things he's built and, uh, you know, and put together and used. But Daddy was a good man. Most of all, he loved the Lord. Well, he sounds like a, a wonderful character. I hate that I never had a chance to meet him. Yeah, he, he was a character, that's yeah. for sure. And I know that you miss him, but if there's anyone out there that even thinks they might have COVID, what advice do you have for them before they visit family? If you even think you've got a little tickle in your throat, I mean, I just thought it was allergies. I should have known better because I don't have allergies. I don't, nothing really bothers me, but it was just a tickle, and I thought, all right, you know, I didn't feel bad, I wasn't nothing, but in that little short weekend there, I was already infected or whatever, and but I didn't know it, and that Friday, my mother-in-law, she's 89, we canned pickled beets together mm -hmm. all day that day. I took her to the doctor that day. And then I went up and stayed with Daddy. So, and then while I was there, my cousin came over, mm -hmm. you know, to visit. And so, in that short amount of time, I gave it to my mother-in-law, my daddy, my cousin. And then after Daddy passed, the day of his funeral, my brother came down with it. And then my sister and all her family. So it, it can spread and you have no idea that you've got it, but if you've got the least, the least little indication, wear a mask, wear gloves, don't go around anybody that could be dangerous if they got it. Well, thank you so much, Patty. Is there anything else that you'd like to say or share with us? I know from working at the hospital that if your family member gets it, now you can't come and visit them. You can't be there with them. I mean, we've been in the room with people that passed away that their loved ones couldn't be in there with them. But I mean, I'm having to see it over and over and over that people are getting it that they don't have any idea where they got it. But it's it's very rampant right now in our county and in the hospital. We admit probably one or two every day with positive COVID. So if you have a loved one that's susceptible or are up in years, my mother-in-law is 89. She was in the hospital for two weeks, but by the grace of God, she made it. Just be careful. That's all I can say.